When Pixar began developing the third Cars movie, they decided to return to the roots of the franchise, with a story centred firmly around Lightning McQueen. yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here, and in this video I'm going to explain all the deleted scenes, original stories and alternate endings that Pixar developed for Cars 3 during five years of production, but that didn't make it into the final movie. Also, I'm running my Cars 3 giveaway for two The Art of Cars 3 hardback books on this video. If you'd like a chance to win one of these two very cool books, which feature gorgeous concept art and storyboards from Cars 3, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment about the film, and also answer the question I'll be asking later in the video. Quick warning, I will be discussing spoilers in this video, so take care if you haven't seen the movie yet. After director John Lasseter made the first Cars movie, he was really keen for legendary actor Paul Newman to return as the voice of Doc Hudson for the sequel. Sadly though, Newman passed away in 2008, and while Cars 2 does make brief mention of Doc, details of how Doc died were never revealed in that movie. However, in an interview with Screen Crush, Cars creative director Jay Ward explained that he had hoped to remedy the lack of details about Doc's passing in Cars 3. In fact, in an early version of the movie, there was going to be a flashback that would have revealed how Doc died. Ward described the deleted scene as a really tender moment where McQueen is driving and Doc's following him, and it's like the day you're meant or passes away. Although Pixar loves to make us cry, the scene was cut because as Ward himself said, it was just depressing. I still think this could have been an interesting scene to include though, as although many Cars and Pixar fans enjoyed Cars 3, many still want to know what really happened to Doc. And as Pixar proved in their incredible introductory montage of Carl and Ellie and Up, a character's death can provide a deeper emotional connection to a movie and its story. One of the best moments in the new movie is when Lightning, Cruz and Mac go incognito at the Thunder Hollow Demolition Derby. Lightning covers himself in mud and takes on the name of Chester Whipplefilter. Cruz uses the alias Francis Beltline, and Mac wears a Jocko Flocko disguise, which if you've watched my Cars 3 Easter Eggs video, you'll know is a sneaky Easter egg to a real-life NASCAR monkey racer. But the theme of Team 95 operating and training undercover was originally going to be a much more extended and long-running joke throughout the movie. For example, initially the beach training scene was going to be set up as a pretend movie shoot, where Guido was an Italian film director and Lightning was an actor pretending to be Lightning McQueen. A bunch of other gags about the team travelling around in disguise were also cut from the final film. For example, Mac was going to conceal his identity in various ways, ranging from a travelling circus to a shipping container, and from a military vehicle to a lumberjack. The character of Cruz Ramirez was very different in early drafts of the story, and initially she was actually a male car, but the filmmakers decided to make her a female car, so she was more of an outsider in the typically male-dominated world of motor racing. Originally, Cruz was also going to be a young rookie racer rather than a trainer, and an early idea was that when Lightning met her at the Rusty's training centre, he would see her as a younger version of himself, in a very similar way to how Doc viewed Lightning when he first met him in the first movie. In the end, though, the filmmakers felt this was retreading too much of the story from Cars 1, so they began to make her more of an opposite character to Lightning, for example, in the way she lacked confidence. Ultimately, the movie's creators believed these changes to Cruz's character helped build a more interesting story by developing a more odd couple style of relationship between Lightning and his new trainer. The relationship between Lightning and Cruz culminates in the Florida 500 Piston Cup event, where midway through the race, Lightning realises that Cruz is the answer to beating Jackson's storm, so he calls her back for his pit stop, but instead of going back out himself, he gives her his number 95 and tells her to race in his place. Before settling on this final twist though, the filmmakers considered a whole bunch of alternate endings. In one of those alternatives, Lightning never took part in the final race at all, and entered Cruz into the race instead, presenting her as a new 95 to his friends from Radiator Springs before the event. This ending didn't work well though, because the filmmakers found that there was a sense that the movie was already finished at the point that Lightning decided to stop racing, which meant that the remaining story felt underwhelming. In another ending, McQueen ran the whole race himself, won it, and then he decided to mentor Cruz only at the very end of the movie. However, this ending made the film feel hollow, according to director Brian Fee. 
In yet another version, they both took part in the race and had to compete against each other, but that didn't work either because it split the audience over who to support. In the end, the filmmakers decided that, to get the right level of tension in the movie's final act, they would have Lightning pass on his number mid-race to Cruz. But even then, there were still further variations considered within this scene. For example, at one point this passing of the torch to Cruz was going to be more fraught, with McQueen getting angry at her when she didn't understand what was going on, though finally they both would have come to a proper understanding and appreciation of each other. I'm not sure quite how I feel about the way the number 95 was passed to Cruz in the final film, as although Smokey explained that the rules only say the number has to be out there, doesn't say who has to wear it, the confusion it initially created meant this transition wasn't quite as smooth as I would have liked. The Cars 3 filmmakers obviously spent a lot of time considering all possible options, but I still wonder whether there was another way to have done this that didn't raise quite so many questions in my mind while I was watching the movie. What did you think about the ending, did you enjoy it, or would you have preferred to see something different. By the way, there are some interesting storyboards which hint at a deleted scene or another alternate ending, where McQueen reveals his transformation into the fabulous Lightning McQueen at the Piston Cup race, rather than at the very end of the movie. You can see him emerging with Doc's colours and the number 51 to a group of press, then the crowd, and finally onto the track, where he faces up to Jackson Storm. In the final movie, the reveal of the fabulous Lightning McQueen is a much more private moment for Lightning with his friends at Radiator Springs. Although the movie's final scene of Lightning unveiling his homage to Doc Hudson was lovely, these storyboards hint that the filmmakers considered a much more dramatic and symbolic way of bringing Doc back to life through his protégé, to quote story supervisor Scott Morse, by having Lightning announce his new number and colours at the Piston Cup. I'm not sure this would have fit the way the rest of the ending played out, but perhaps fans of Doc Hudson especially would have enjoyed seeing this scene. Production on Cars 3 began at Pixar in 2013, but it wasn't until 2015 that the final direction of the story was decided on after John Lasseter was inspired by the retirement of his friend, professional NASCAR racer Jeff Gordon, at the age of 43. Which means that during those two years, various fascinating ideas and stories were considered for the sequel. Some of those early ideas involved returning to Route 66 and also including Route 99, and even racing on dry bed lakes. One idea that was developed in a little more detail was an exploration of Southern California car culture, plus celebrity culture in LA. In an interview with Screen Junkies News, director Brian Fee revealed that in one early story, Lightning went to a Hollywood Hills party and it was full of actors, and they had the old Batmobile and the new Batmobile talking to each other at the party. Obviously, this was a whole other story, but I imagine this scene could have been a lot of fun, as we already saw car versions of Pixar movie characters from Toy Story, Monsters University and A Bug's Life in the credits for the first Cars movie. And I imagine there could have been a lot of potential for jokes and voice cameos by previous Batman actors or soundalikes. I also wonder whether an LA-based story might have explored Sally's past history and the city. If you recall, back in the first Cars movie, we learned that Sally was originally a hotshot lawyer in Los Angeles, and it could have been interesting to see her backstory explored. So are there any deleted scenes or stories you would love to have seen in Cars 3? And do you think there should be a fourth Cars movie, and if so, what would you like to see happen? For a chance to win this awesome The Art of Cars 3 hardback book, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment about the movie and also answer the following question. What famous superhero car almost appeared in Cars 3? Turn on your notifications to get all my new videos where I'll be announcing the winners of the giveaway. Plus, let me know what deleted scenes you'd like me to do in future videos. And if you enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up button and check out more of my movie deleted scenes and Pixar videos right here. Congratulations to these three winners of my Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl giveaways who are on the screen right now. If you're one of them, send me a message on YouTube or via my email, which you can find on my About page. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!